This is KGW News at 11. Good evening. We begin tonight with the first and only VP debate of 2020. Vice President Mike Pence and Kamala Harris faced off in Utah. Like much of this year, the debate was dominated by the coronavirus. They knew and they covered it up. The president said it was a hoax. They minimized the seriousness of it. We were able to see to the delivery of billions of supplies so our doctors and nurses had the resources and support they needed. And we began really before the month of February was art to develop a vaccine. While there were tense moments, the debate was much more civil than the previous presidential debate. As always, our Verify team was watching the debate closely and fact-checking the candidates' claims. Here's Jason Puckett. Vice President Mike Pence and Senator Kamala Harris took to the debate stage Wednesday for the first and only vice presidential debate of this election. We're fact-checking both Pence and Harris right now. Here's Kamala Harris. Do you know this administration took the word science off the website? and then took the phrase climate change off the website. This claim is true, but needs context. A study by the Environmental Data and Governance Initiative tracked government websites and found many agencies like the EPA removed and changed parts of their websites during the Trump admin. These changes included the removal and quote overhaul of climate change sections of sites, including the EPA, WhiteHouse.gov, Department of State, and the Department of Energy. Now it's true that mentions of climate change were removed from those sites, but not all government websites have had the words removed. Climate.gov and cleannet.org are both government sites that have collections about climate change still on their websites right now. What ended up happening is because of a so-called trade war with China, America lost 300,000 manufacturing jobs. This claim is false. There was a report by Moody Analytics in 2019 that estimated 300,000 fewer jobs were created in the U.S. as a result of the trade war with China. But that's not the same as losing manufacturing jobs. Data from the Economic Policy Institute shows the U.S. has actually gained about 500,000 manufacturing jobs since 2016, though some of those gains have been lost due to COVID. Here's Mike Pence. Senator Kamala Harris was one of only 10 members of the Senate to vote against the USMCA. This claim is true. The United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement, or USMCA, replaced and updated the North American Free Trade Pact, or NAFTA. Senate records show that when the USMCA was up for vote in the U.S. Senate, Kamala Harris was one of 10 senators who voted against the bill. When Joe Biden was vice president of the United States, not 7.5 million people contracted the swine flu. 60 million Americans contracted the swine flu. This claim is true, but needs context. In the year between 2009 and 2010, CDC data shows an estimated 40 to 90 million cases of swine flu with 12,469 deaths. In roughly eight months so far this year, we have more than 7.5 million confirmed COVID cases and 211,000 deaths. Now we have many more claims from both Pence and Harris up on our website. And if you see something you want us to take a look at, send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. President Trump went back to work at the Oval Office today amid fears he may further spread COVID through the White House staff. His doctor reported he's been fever free for more than four days and symptom free for over 24 hours. The president released another video today. He praised the experimental antibody cocktail he received in the hospital and said he wants to make his treatment options available to everyone for free. Because I feel great. I feel like perfect. So I think this was a blessing from God that I caught it. 18 people connected to the White House have now tested positive for the coronavirus. Two administration officials tell NBC News staffers have been informed all contact tracing is now done and they are not singling out the source of the infections. Some Oregonians who say they've been sick with COVID for months are frustrated with the president's messages to the public about the disease. He is not helping our plight and not only is he not helping he is directly hindering us from gaining the help that we need i'm afraid that people are going to see him and how he recovered and say oh it really is no big deal so they're going to go about their way not wearing masks spreading the disease it doesn't matter what their politics are he's doing a disservice to everybody that's not taking it seriously those three women first contracted the virus in either March or April. All have been back to the hospital in the last month to deal with those lingering effects. 
They worry the public isn't paying enough attention to cases like theirs. The recovery rate for most age groups who get COVID is 99%, but the CDC says 35% of people have lingering effects. Developing tonight, an eight-year-old Gresham boy is facing a week's long recovery after being badly hurt in a hit and run crash. KGW's Mike Benner spoke to the little boy's mother and great aunt who are pleading with the driver to come forward. I just wish that everybody would just pay attention. A mother is pleading with drivers to slow down and pay attention after her son was badly hurt in a hit and run crash. He could have been dead right now. I'm just hurt. Authorities tell us around 515 Monday evening near Northeast 178th in Oregon, eight year old Amani Burns was riding his bike when he was hit by a car. It did not take long for the news to reach Amani's great aunt who raced to the scene. And it's like, you know, oh my God. And he was just laying there bleeding and his leg was twisted. Cassandra Carter says Amani suffered multiple breaks in his leg and was rushed to Randall Children's Hospital. He's doing okay, but you know, he's in a lot of pain and he do have a concussion too. I ain't stopped crying. You see my eyes puffy. I ain't stopped crying yet. Tanisha Bradley's pain turned to anger when she found out the driver who hit her little boy did not even stop to see if he was okay. Why wouldn't they stop? You know, a kid, an eight year old, it doesn't matter whoever, he's eight years old. Why won't you stop? That question will haunt Tanisha for some time. Same for Amani's great aunt, who has this message for the driver who hit him. Please, you know, turn yourself in, you know. You know, he's just a baby. As Amani continues his recovery here at the hospital, detectives are working hard to track down the hit and run driver. We can tell you the suspect vehicle is described as a gold or champagne colored van with a black roof rack. Anyone with information about this case should contact the Gresham Police Department. Reporting in North Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. We're getting better insight tonight into how many people face criminal charges in connection with Portland protests and riots. The Multnomah County District Attorney released a dashboard anyone can look at. It shows how many cases he's pursuing and how many have been dismissed. Here are the numbers when it comes to protests. 974 cases have been referred to the DA's office. Of those, 182 are still being reviewed. 128 have been charged and 666 have been dismissed. That's 70%. Most of those were rejected in, quote, the interest of justice. The rest for other issues like insufficient evidence. DA Mike Schmidt has said he won't pursue charges for those arrested on crimes that don't involve deliberate property damage theft or violence. He said he wants to protect free speech and be realistic about the number of cases his office can prosecute. You need to do the right thing. You want to do the right thing. But when it, something like this happens, it's just it's really frustrating. Frustration from a firefighter. He happened to be in the right place at the right time to help someone who just got into a car crash. But that good deed left him with a stolen truck and an injured leg. James Troutman is a fire and EMT captain with East County Fire. He serves Camas and Washougal. He was coming back from a fishing trip with his friend Travis Langer when he witnessed a man driving erratically, then crossing the center line and causing a head on crash. Troutman quickly pulled over, blocked traffic and went to check on the person who was hit. Meanwhile, the driver that caused the crash saw his chance to get away. He heard a siren, he, he cursed, jumped in my truck. So Travis went to the passenger side. I went to the driver's side to reach in to get the keys that he had found. And when that happened, he took off, pulling me along and hurting my knee. He hit Travis hard enough to break his phone in his pocket. Yeah. The man took off in Troutman's truck with the fishing boat towing behind it. He got away. Clark County deputies tracked the boat down in Portland, but it had been stripped of parts. The truck, a 2019 metallic gray F-150 XLT, is still missing. Friends have set up a GoFundMe for Troutman to help with his losses and to say thank you for his service. You can find a link at KGW.com. We're hearing a great story tonight of generosity in the wake of Oregon's historic wildfires. 
Linda Webb wanted a way to help those who had their homes destroyed or damaged in the fires. She thought of her husband, Jim, who was a contractor and worked on many homes in the area. He passed away in March. She decided collecting tools would be the perfect way to pitch in and honor his memory. She rented a U-Haul truck and started collecting donations at the Napa Auto Parts store in Silverton. The community has helped fill the truck up now twice already. I'm one of the first to say, oh, people are so mean and people are this and people are that. Actually, what it turns out is people are super kind. They're, you, you know, sometimes the loudest people get the voice, you know, but in reality, I mean, this is, these trucks have been filled with people that are just downright kind and are giving from the heart. It has helped me a lot and it's helped me with my loss. Well, that gives you a lot of hope, doesn't it? So far, Linda has distributed tools and gates, which was badly damaged by the fires in the Santa Ana Canyon. She will be accepting more donations through this Sunday.